Okay, hello YouTube. In this video, we're going to be covering a variation in the Open Sicilian called the O'Kelly variation and how we need to try to face this as white. So if you like content like this and you want to see more of it, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and please click on your notification icon. So the O'Kelly happens after e4, c5, knight f3, and then black is going to play a6. So the way that I've always kind of viewed the O'Kelly is it's a little bit of a trap. It's basically trying to get white to play uh, pawn to d4, which is what white would normally play in any kind of normal open Sicilian. But since black already has a grip on the b5 square, it makes any variation where black goes into something similar to Alaska Pelican with e5 all that much more powerful because now there is no knight on d to b5. So an example would be, let's say we play d4, cd4, knight d4, they could play something like knight f6. And if we continue with knight c3, they would simply play e5, and we would be forced to retreat this knight passively to one of these three squares because the aggressive outpost that we would normally enjoy in Alaska Pelican is no longer available to us. So we wouldn't be able to play our mainline Alaska Pelican. Um, we can try other kind of continuations here. F3 was actually tried with uh, between... Ferozia and uh, Vitikov, and this actually turned out um, well for Black. Uh, Black did the same thing. He played e5, and then he played the immediate d5. So this is the other issue, is if we don't do something to control that d5 square, they're going to be able to play e5 and d5, and then Black is going to declare kind of at least equality in these positions. And of course, uh, Vitikov won that game against Ferozia in 2016. So... The question is, how do we play against the O'Kelly? And basically it boils down to what is in your uh, personal opening repertoire. So my experience against the O'Kelly is, again, it's kind of like these other lines. It's kind of like the Nimzovich with knight f6, or it's kind of like b6. Is I don't see these lines very often. You know, it's like one in a hundred games, one in a thousand games, where I play the open Sicilian, I might see an O'Kelly. So... It comes down to what I feel comfortable with in terms of what's already in my opening repertoire. Now, there's basically three lines that you can play against the O'Kelly that all avoid the move pawn to d4 on move 3. You can play it kind of like a c3 Sicilian with pawn to c3. You can play some form of the Meroxy bind um, with the move pawn to c4. And again, all of these ideas are just trying to take advantage of the fact that a6 has been thrown in. So if you are if you already have the Meroxy bind um, in your repertoire in other places, it would make sense to incorporate c4 here. Um, if you're already familiar with the Alpen and you like the idea of playing the Alpen variation where black has thrown in a6, which isn't necessarily a useful move, then c3 is a very useful move here. Um, if you're like me and you don't play the Meroxy bind universally against everything, you only play it a, a, under a couple of um, uh, select circumstances and conditions, and you've never played an Alpen with white, um, then you might go for this third option, which is lesser played, and it's my personal preference just because it doesn't involve me having to study a whole new ream of theory. And that move is actually just pawn to d3. So I think white needs to play pawn to d3 here, and then after the move um, knight to c6, we're going to continue with the move pawn to g3, and this is what we call a um, King's Indian attack setup. So one of the nice things that I like about this is this is basically just a setup for white. Um, a good stem game that you can actually use for this particular opening is right out of um, my 60 memorable games. I believe it's actually the very first game in uh, my 60 memorable games, um, and that game is... Fisher versus uh, Sherwin that was played in, uh, let me see if I can get the year here, uh, it was played in 1957. So that game actually opened a little bit differently, so it wasn't the O'Kelly, but it will give you an idea of exactly how to play these um, King's Indian attack setups, because that game actually opened um, slightly differently. So that game was actually an E6 game here. Uh, after, instead of a6, we had e6, then d3, then knight c6, g3. And um, that's how that game went. So that game was actually pretty famous. It was, uh, that game continued knight f6, bishop g2, bishop e7, castles, castles, knight on b to d2, rook b8, rook, rook e1. And you can see here, um, and th the reason this is a good stem game for playing against the O'Kelly is we can almost follow this game 
uh, to the letter without the move uh, A6 thrown in, because um, this was not a tempo that Sherwin ever wasted in this position. He never did play the move A6. So we have D6, C3, we have B6, D4 in this game. And of course, uh, Fisher, you know, attacks in the middle of the board. It's actually a very similar plan to like a Roy Lopez. Um, you notice with C3 and D4 with the knights placed on D2 and F3. So then we had takes, takes, knight E4, bringing his pieces into the middle. We have these exchanges, knight G5, and um, then a super cool move about to take place. We have H4, and then the cool move. We have knight takes H7, and then Fisher ended up um, with a winning position against Sherwin uh, after... Uh, there, there's just nothing here. Um, if if king takes h7, Fisher had bishop f4 because now the knight is pinned, um, so he can take advantage of that diagonal. And if uh, knight takes h7, he play, as he played in the game, he played h5. And of course, the idea here is, again, that bishop f4 is coming. So Sherwin had to do this instead. He played knight h4, and it um, ended up not helping him. He played gh4, and uh, more cool stuff happened, and uh, Fisher ended up winning uh, a very cool game with White. Um, for, for further uh, details on the rest of this game, uh, I would recommend getting the book My 60 Memorable Games and uh, looking this game up and using this as a STEM game uh, for your King's Indian attack setup. So the game that we're going to be following uh, for the O'Kelly variation uh, King's Indian attack, which is a little bit different, um, is basically the same type of plan but a lot of times black will employ this g6 plan which is of course very different from what we saw in uh fisher versus sherwin so we're going to see bishop g7 castles here but ostensibly the same setup putting knights on d2 and f3 and just preparing to attack the center of the board we're going to play d6 we're going to play rookie one bishop d7 and now here you can follow this game um and i do like it it's uh vanderweed versus uh blexen and played in 2000 um, and that game continued with the move pawn to a3, and I thought this was actually a very good game to follow. Um, it basically, white just follows a central pawn pushing strategy. You can also play a move like um, a4, and I kind of like this idea because I like the idea of, a, a certain, a, a, especially against the fee and shadow, I like the idea of playing like an h4, h5 at some point. So like after a4, queen c7, I'm going to play knight f1, and then I'm going to play h4. And I just like the idea of having this kind of h5 on standby to kind of go for aggressive attacking ideas, um, sometimes involving even like bringing these knights over and um, putting some pressure on, on the, the uh, h6 square. I mean, in this case, the bishop is eyeballing g4, so of course we can't do this right away. But I like the idea of just having this h pawn sticking out there, having this h5 on standby, having this knight g5 on standby, having these ideas of eventually trading off the dark squared bishop and just basically attacking the king side. Um, this is another approach, and, and these positions are supposed to be slight advantage white as well. So this is another way to play it. Or you can simply follow um, this game that went a3, and I think this is also a very good way to play it. Just play a3 and then play uh, for the center of the board like Vanderweed did. So we can play a3, knight e8, knight b3, just again going for the middle, just, just straight up going for the center of the board. You know, e5, um, takes, takes, bishop f4, and... Clearly, white has an advantage here. And that's kind of how these positions are just played in general. White plays the moves, you know, d3, c3, knight on f3, knight on d2, and white's pieces coordinate very well to play for the middle of the board in some way and declare some sort of advantage there. So queen c7, we have d4. Um, this game just continued. You just see how natural all of white's moves are. Uh, white just exchanged a bunch of material, and black just ended up with two uh, very exploitable weaknesses on d6 and c4, and this was um, more than enough to win. So you can just um, see how this game continued. He just pokes at these weaknesses, puts pressure on them, threatens to exchange queens. Black has nothing better, and now all of black's pawns are still um, kind of on the hot seat. All these pawns are still uh, weak, and they're still hanging, and black has to try to find a way to defend all of them but he doesn't have a good way to do it. Um, after he plays a5 to defend that one, white goes ahead and nails this one down, and that also sets up the threat of bishop to c6. So after bishop c5, bishop f5, we have bishop c6. Uh, there's just not going to be any saving this long term. Once, once all of these pawns get captured, uh, white has uh, too many passed pawns, 
and this isn't uh, this isn't savable. So Black threw in the towel one move later. After after Bishop takes b5, uh, Black decided that he'd had enough and he just didn't want to play chess anymore. Um, the past a pawn is going to be just uh, too much to deal with. Uh, none of the bishops can get to it. So this is just going to be an easy win for White from here. So that's how I recommend uh, playing against uh, the um, the uh, O'Kelly variation, a6. I recommend playing the King's Indian attack. And again, it's just because it's something that I feel it's easy to familiarize yourself with the basic plans of the King's Indian attack is White. Um, you can study that one uh, Fisher versus Sherwin game in my 60 memorable games that'll give you some good insight. And of course, this uh, Vanderweed uh, versus uh, Treason game will give you some pretty good insight in how to deal with the Fiend Shadow lines. And other than that, like all the plans are actually pretty similar to plans that you would see in a Roy Lopez for White or even a quiet game or an Italian game for White, where the idea is to get that pawn duo in the middle of the board with, you know, C3 and D4. So it should be ideas that you're already pretty familiar with that you can just kind of port over into this opening. Now, if you're going to run into the Akeli variation more often, if you're going to see this on a regular basis, I would recommend maybe learning one of these more, um, you know, sophisticated lines where um, you turn it into an Alpen variation where you're up a tempo, or you try to turn it into a Marazzi where you're up a tempo. But for, for as little as I see it, I'm just going to take the very slight advantage of Black having wasted this move pawn to a6 in a King's Indian attack structure, and that's enough for me to declare that my position is slightly better, and I'm okay with that, especially since I'm already familiar with all the plans and the ideas. So anyways, um, that's how I recommend facing the O'Kelly variation with white. Um, I hope that you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new about chess, and I hope you learned some ideas that you can use in your own games. Thank you very much for watching.